Hello and welcome to Becoming Home. If you watched my last video, you probably saw a reflection of this painting in the mirror that I refinished. Although it wasn't completed then, I'm excited to share the final version with you today. You may have gathered from the title that this is more of a what not to do tutorial. I ran into a lot of obstacles along the way. But hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. So let's get started. Grab your supplies. You need acrylic paint in white, black, silver and gold a sponge, I'm just using the kitchen variety, clean of course, assorted paint brushes, a palette of some sort, I used a paper plate, and water. Purchase a large white canvas, the dimensions on mine are 24 by 48 inches. I buy these at Michael's or Hobby Lobby when they buy one get one 50% off. Squeeze out the paint onto your palette. You'll want mostly white but with some silver and light grey. You'll also see blue accents appear, but disregard those. They're going to go away later. Wet your sponge, then squeeze it out so that it's damp, but not dripping. Dab it in your white paint and then apply it to the canvas. Sometimes this motion was dabs, sometimes it was swipes, sometimes it was circles. It all depends on the look you're going for. What you're trying to do is create texture. You may think it's silly to paint a white canvas with mostly white paint, but believe me, it makes all the difference. I know you can't really see it in the video, but the texture is what takes your homemade, unfinished looking painting and elevates it into an abstract, legitimate looking painting in its own right. To all this white paint, you're going to add little dots of silver or grey. Some of these accents were swiped or dabbed into the white. Some I left as little pops of undiluted colour. You can add these colours with the corner of the sponge or with a separate paintbrush. If you use the sponge method, you've got to be careful. What you don't want is for the colour to start muddying up your white. I speak from experience. Enter Exhibit 1 of what not to do. I got carried away with my blue accents. My white paint became muddy and the bottom left corner of my painting became overwhelmingly blue. I didn't like it and decided to ignore it, because that's always the best option, and finish the rest of the canvas. Unfortunately, and unsurprisingly, the ugly splotches of blue had not magically disappeared by the time I got back to that section of the painting. I kept thinking, there's got to be some way I can redeem this blue and get it to work for me. After all, being flexible and open to mistakes can give you surprising and rewarding results. However, in the end, the blue was redeemed by being scraped off. I used the sponge, then paper towels, and then an old table knife, but just go straight for the knife or some similar tool, it's way more efficient. Once my scraped off blue had dried sufficiently, I dabbed over it with white and little swirls of grey and silver and my painting became one cohesive, textured background for my design. The original idea for this painting was inspired by Pinterest. The picture had two intersecting circles dissected by three black lines. I'm using two of my largest bowls to get the outlines for my circles. Hold your bowl against the canvas, ensuring that it's placed where you want it, and then trace around it with a pencil. Now paint one of those circles gold and one silver. I use my paintbrush for this. You'll see that the first strokes of gold are too transparent because I have too much water on my brush. You want a thick, opaque layer of paint. Once I'd painted the circles, I added some shadowing on the edges of the circles to push them off the canvas towards the viewer. This will make your design look less two-dimensional and flat, and therefore less boring. I love how the ridges and texture of the dried white paint are highlighted by the metallic colors. On the other hand, look how underwhelmed and small those circles look on that huge canvas. Enter exhibit two of what not to do. Don't forget to consider scale. Yes, there is a lot of negative white space on the finished painting, but at the moment, the white space is completely overwhelming the design. You have to get the balance between white space and design so that it looks comfortable or at least not awkward or unfinished. This also has somewhat to do with placement. If the balls had been placed more towards the center, then the fact that they were too small might have been redeemed. But in addition to being too small, they were also placed too high, leaving a large awkward white expanse underneath the design. So now I'm thinking, how do I redeem or work with my awkward scaling? My solution, paint a shadow. Pretend there's a light source coming from the left corner of the canvas throwing a shadow of the circles onto the imaginary floor of the canvas. This would use up the excess space beneath the circles and add a cool element to my design. In theory, this is a good way to redeem this issue. If executed properly, the design would have looked even more three-dimensional and interesting. But, enter exhibit three of what not to do. 
I completely overestimated my ability to make grey paint look like a shadow. It just looked like a mess. In disgust, I set that painting aside for several months, waiting for inspiration to strike. And after a couple months, it did. I was ready to tackle that grey blob of paint that was clearly not a shadow and make it look good. I got out all my supplies, set up the painting, set up my camera equipment. Enter exhibit 4 of what not to do. I forgot to press record on the camera. You know, if you make tutorials on YouTube, it's kind of important that you show people the steps you took to get to the completed project. Otherwise, what's the use? So now I have this completed painting on my hands that I can't go back and unpaint and a lack of step-by-step -step video for my tutorial. How do I redeem this? Well, make it an anti-tutorial. What not to do when painting an abstract painting for your spare room. Anyway, what I did was flip the painting and make it horizontal. It actually looks good whichever way I turn it, but the horizontal orientation ended up working best for my space. I got a basket big enough to cover my grey shadow and drew another circle and then painted it black. I decided to leave a portion of it unpainted because I thought it looked more interesting and striking. Then, because I still wanted to capture the lines of the original inspiration painting, and because I needed to balance out that really large and heavy black circle, I used a ruler to pencil in three lines, which I then painted gold. And now I love it. Despite all the missteps along the way, the muddy blue, the awkward scaling, the awful shadow, I now have an interesting abstract painting to hang in my spare bedroom. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, or lack of it. If you like my content, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. I make all sorts of videos including cooking, crafting and organization. Check out my tutorials here. Some that I'm actually proud of are my vintage table makeover and my marbled eggs video. Thanks to everybody out there watching my channel and I'll see you next Friday.